Hello everyone, Nabil here from Impact Soundworks presenting the first video in our Shredder 3 Masterclass tutorial series. This video series will teach you all of Shredder 3's most important features, from basic playing and editing to advanced controls and automations. It'll also introduce and explain key concepts about MIDI sequencing, automation, and real-life guitar performance techniques to help you create the most expressive and authentic performances in your music. For our first video, let's begin with the very basics. You're thinking about purchasing a Shredder 3 instrument, or you've just picked one up and downloaded it for the first time. This video will show your first look at the product and how quickly you can start writing and performing with it. With the library registered in native access, loading is as simple as double-clicking in the Libraries tab or dragging the instrument name into contact. Let's look at Shredder 3 Jupiter, an upgraded 7-string guitar instrument crafted from the same sample recordings as the critically acclaimed Shredder 2. At the bottom you'll see our playable range, the blue keys. Now, some basses and guitars have more strings or different tunings, and as a result have different playable ranges. Despite this, the MIDI octaves for each pitch are consistent across all Shredder 3 instruments. For example, a MIDI note like C3 is the exact same pitch in Shredder 3 Jupiter as it is in Shredder 3 Abyss, our bass guitar, and the same on a regular piano. This makes it easy to transfer MIDI data between instruments without moving octaves up or down. That being said, let's now play a bit with the default patch. All of these instruments are recorded DI. That is, direct input with no effects, distortions, amp sims, or cabinets. To amplify or process the sound, you can use external plugins in your digital audio workstation, or take advantage of the many built-in tone presets that come with each Shredder 3 library. Right under the patch name, you can click the drop-down arrow and select a snapshot from the list. Each snapshot will change the tone by loading various effects like amp sims, cabinet speakers, EQ, pedals, and so on. Right now let's ignore the foldered snapshots under Styles and TACT. We'll cover these in a later video. That being said, now I'm going to load up the high gain distortion preset called Metal Lead 1. Now we'll look at a different type of distortion and play some power chords. Let's turn on one of the multi-track guitars while we're at it to create a wide mix-ready rhythm part. In addition to distorted sounds best for hard rock and metal, We've included clean tone presets as well. These are minimally distorted and enhanced with effects like delays, reverbs, and choruses. They're perfect for playing chords, arpeggios, or any other softer material. Usually these tone presets will have clean in the title or other soft sounding words like ambient or soft. Now, so far I've been only using the default sustain articulation, but there are actually plenty of other techniques in every Shredder 3 instrument. By default, you can switch articulations by using the key switches in the red highlighted range. Be sure to check your specific Shredder 3 product's key colors to see where these are, as different playable ranges end up putting these key switches in different octaves. To activate the key switches, you can click directly on the contact keyboard, use your MIDI controller, or sequence a MIDI note in your DAW's piano roll. Let's check out the palm mute articulation, and while we're at it, try out another metal tone preset. Mm -hmm. 
With mute articulations, the MIDI note velocity, or in other words, how hard you play, affects how tight the mutes are, with stronger notes receiving looser mutes, or mutes with longer decay. Let's quickly check out a few other articulations as well. Note that a few of these articulations are sampled power chords. These can be used to greatly simplify MIDI input with an even more authentic sound for rhythm guitar passages. Before wrapping up, there's one last thing to note. While our new poly input and strumming features will be covered in great detail in a later video, you're actually already benefiting from them by default. In a nutshell, poly input adds an optional look ahead window. This basically creates a small latency on every note you play. The size of this latency is controlled by this knob on the front page and can be switched off by turning the knob down to zero. By default, the window is set to 25 milliseconds. If you play chords within this window, their voicings will sound more realistic as they'll be shaped as closely as possible across adjacent strings in proximity to any previous notes that you played, such as in a lead melody or previous chord. The resulting tone of the chord is very balanced and natural, and this is an important aspect of realistic guitar mockups. If you are not planning to play or write chord parts, or any parts with harmony and polyphony in them, it's best to turn this knob all the way down for zero latency playback. Note, however, if a chord is quantized in the MIDI editor, it will still be processed as a poly input, even when the window is set to zero milliseconds. To put it simply, you can benefit from poly input this way without even turning it on. Also with every poly input, you'll notice that Shredish 3 automatically adds a slight strumming motion. This makes it a bit easier to write realistic harmonies, so you don't have to manually perform every strum you play with perfectly with your hands. This automatic strum feature can also be disabled. Just click the strumming tab, then disable the orange button labeled strum on poly input. The notes will then sound exactly as you input them in MIDI, still benefiting from natural placement on the fretboard. When the strum on poly input feature is enabled, or when utilizing the Shredder 3 strumming engine, there are various features available to control intensity, speed, and stroke direction. These will be covered in the later video I mentioned on strumming features, and they're also detailed right now in the product manuals. That concludes our first video on the basic out-of-box usage of Shredders 3. We hope you'll subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for the next entries in the Shredders 3 Masterclass series. Music